What's going on, TLN? It's Rocket Rob 99 giving a quick start guide for you guys in Planet Side 2. Um, you know, a lot of members have uh, tried to get into the game and have gotten a little frustrated starting out. And, you know, we felt that it might be just a good idea to uh, put together, a, you know, sort of a guide to get you started on your first day and what to expect, how to spawn in, how to team up with members, and give you, you know, something to build on from day one. Um, you know, it's not Battlefield, it's it's a larger scale game, so there's a little bit more to learn uh, to get going and get into the game. Um, let's start, first start out with your character creation and what server to choose. As you can see here, there are several different servers to choose from. Uh, Gwadeen, Palos, Crux, and uh, as you can see, I'm going to uh, make a new one on this uh, additional uh, new server. So, of course, TLN is new conglomerate, so you want to choose uh, that character, and then uh, here's the uh, server list. Um, right now, TLN is probably going to be primarily on Palos, P A L O S. And Crux, C-R-U-X, will be our backup server. So you basically want to set up your primary character on Palos um, and start from there. So just disregard the next step here. You're going to see I'm actually going to join uh, Seer House, which is just to give you an idea what to you guys to expect from day one. Here's your character selection. Not much to choose from, but it's no big deal. You really can't see your character anyway. When selecting your name, my recommendation to you is to use a name that closely resembles your PSN. And then if you are making different characters for different servers, make sure that your name stays the same for the different characters. This will go a long way in making things easier for people to find you and to get uh, folks onto your individual you know, uh, friends list. The game does have its own friend list, so you are going to need to add people uh, to your friends list in order to join and squad up with TLN. As you can see here, I chose just a formation of my name to get started, and I uh, go right into the uh, server from here. Uh, you start off on Coltier server until you uh, reach a certain level, but you can warp out and go into other uh, servers. Um, However, it's a good place to start. Everybody in here is a low rank, so that's a good place to start and uh, learn the game a little bit. So as you see here, you spawn, and this is a spawn room that you'll come into. That's a warp gate there. And over there in the corner, this is where you adjust your loadouts for how you want to play. Uh, these consoles are located throughout the map, but are generally in bases. So in here you have your character selection screen. And you can choose from different characters as you reach certain levels uh, in the game. Um, Light Assault is kind of the default one, and that's the one that gives you the jump jetpack so that you can reach higher places. Uh, the weapon, the assault weapon on for that is, eh, it's not too bad, but it ain't great. Um, Combat Medic is how I run, so uh, for this video here, I'm going to give you just a brief overlay of how I, you know, set up my character. Um, the nano regeneration device will allow you to regenerate health of your teammates in close proximity to you, um, which you can upgrade. Everything in this game allows you to upgrade weapons, skills, suit uh, upgrades, and so on. As you can see here, the different classes require certain levels to be able to unlock the ability. Um, so I, I wanted to also point out that you know, one of the main vehicles you're going to use is called the Sunderer, or often referred to as the Sunday. When this vehicle is in the deployed position as it is here in this, you can use this as a mobile loadout uh, station, where you can change your loadouts, uh, change your class, and switch up to a class that you may need, uh, depending on what's going on in the game. Um, here I'm just showing you here that you can upgrade your different skills and gadgets and tools also from the Sunderer panel, um, which also allows you some flexibility to use your cert points, which is how you uh, unlock things, uh, right on the battlefield. You don't have to be the base to upgrade that, 
uh, or change your loadouts or change your class. And that's an important thing some people I don't think know about the Sanderer, uh, that it is, is such a versatile battlefield tool uh when you're in the game again you want to upgrade your stuff as opposed to changing out different gadgets and stuff and uh do it that way and try things out before you change things biggest thing here everybody is, is how do you get into the battle rocket well this little globe thing which you will find in the general warp gate uh which is the basic spawn allows you to warp into different portions or different continents uh, in the game, each one of these continents represent a huge map that allow that that everybody is fighting over. So this allows you to uh, warp into those particular con continents and uh, try them out. Uh, these this is the base map here. This is the coal tier map. As you can see, it's pretty small uh, overall comparatively to some of the other maps, which are quite huge. There is friendly fire in this game, so keep in mind, try not to shoot your teammates because you will eventually get your weapons locked. As you can see here, when you go into the spawn screen, you can scroll between the different places to spawn. My tip is to you is to look for the place where there's the most amount of enemies there and teammates and then spawn into that location that's to sh be sure that you're going to find a battle soon as you spawn in uh, when you spawn into those particular areas, if you want to move to a different part of it, you can go through uh, basically a teleportation device, which will take you from the top down to the lower level, ground level, and let you get out into the field of battle, and perhaps even flank, as I did here. Um, there are a lot of versatilities in the, in the different bases to allow you protection, so although you can be spawn camped, you can defend and fight out of it if you have enough people. Um, here's another weapons panel, which is actually in a different part of a base. It's a different base. But again, these are sprinkled all throughout every main control base there is. Um, there are overlays on the map that will help you find them. Here's a vehicle uh, spawn for air vehicles, so obviously I'm on the top portion of this base, and there are several different vehicles. Of course, this character doesn't have enough ranking, so I have nothing to unlock at this point. Um, tanks and other vehicles are available also from the same type of console. And you have different types of vehicles to use in ATV, um, which also has different configurations that you can change. All the vehicles allow different configurations for guns and or seating positions. Uh, the Sunder, as you can see, is available for you as soon as you get in, and also the base level tank. Um, you have different things that you can option up on each vehicle. The tank definitely has a hell of a lot of different things that you can add and change to it. Optics and different uh, countermeasures, uh, different types of uh, ammo and so on. And uh, this is true of many of the vehicles in the game. Uh, comms are, are handled uh, through voice over internet protocol. If you're playing the game, it defaults to proxy chat. And we learned tonight that if you want to uh, change that, you just have to swipe up on your touchpad and it'll change it to squad chat. You need to be conscious that proxy chat is the default. And you may hear some people on your team and not realize that you're even in squad chat or not in squad chat. Something to be sure to check as soon as you get into the game. The additional supplemental menu system allows you to edit and look at almost every single aspect of the game. It's easily scrollable. It's pretty much self-explanatory. And the social tab there, as you saw in the, as I scrolled through that, is where you would find the squad menu. Unfortunately, I didn't capture enough video of that uh, to show that, show you all how that lays out. But that's where you find your squad menu. In order to join a squad, you need to receive an invite uh, from either another person in the squad, which needs to be approved by the squad leader, um, or the squad leader can send it to you. If the person is already on your friends list, it's a piece of cake, takes two seconds to invite somebody to the squad and get them in with you. If they're not, it's a little bit cumbersome, you have to spell out their name precisely. Caps and small case letters need to be identified as well as any numbers. 
So if you're telling somebody you need a squad invite, you need to spell your name and indicate whether it's a cap. So in my case, it's capital R-O-C-K-E-T, capital R-O-B. Um, 99 or 999 depending on which profile I'm under so be advised of that and that's the uh, most important thing to learning on getting grouped up with everybody the biggest this other biggest thing I hear a lot of people uh, uh, complain about is uh, spawns and running in this game <sighs> listen it's very simple. If you run into a situation where you're away from the squad, the squad's left you at the base, and it's 2,000 meters to get to the next objective, just hit your touchpad and redeploy. Redeploying is not a death. I'll say that again. Redeploying is not a death. So there's no fear to do that. But generally, you have, as you can see here in the death screen, choices are spawn now. Now it tells me that I could spawn 107, I think it says, 107 meters away from where I am right now in a sunderer, or I could go to the standard spawn. The standard spawn will allow you to scroll through different sections of the map, and again, if you're in a squad, all you would have to do in the standard spawn screen is hit R3, and you will automatically spawn to the area of the map where your squad is or where the most members of your squad are. So it's easy to, to squad in, uh, spawn in with your squad. If not, you scroll through the different places that were on the map where you can spawn in and just look for the most amount of enemies or teammates and join in on that. The last thing you could do, obviously, uh, is is thing called instant action, which is by hitting the triangle button, and that will throw you into a part of the map where the most amount of fighting is going on. Um, it's a bit pandemonium when you hit uh, instant spawn, so you because you, you're kind of thrown into it, uh, but it does allow you to get right into the action and get a couple of you know minutes or just a quick game if you'd like um so that gives you some advantages and some flexibility to be able to play the game especially if there isn't a lot of your friends on to squad up with i will see this squatting up and this is vital so practice deploying and learning how to spawn on people and you will have much more fun with this game at the end of the day it comes down to working with the team and that's how you'll enjoy planet side so I stress everybody to get their names on everybody's friends list and get into this game as soon as possible. We're having a ball out there. Till next time, this is Rocket Rob 99 